All right, let's get right into it, Jess. Cease and desist. Now, when I was a little kid, I always thought that it was cease and assist. No, there's no assisting here. No. It's desisting. Desist. Stop. The opposite of assist. Yes. Stop it. Stop it. So the nonprofit group Plain Sight got a hold of some documents from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, through a FOIA request. Do you know what a FOIA request is? Freedom of Information Act. Yep. So uh, they got these documents last week showing that NHTSA sent a cease and desist letter to Tesla to stop making safety claims about the Model 3. Oh my goodness. And NHTSA also subpoenaed Tesla to get info on the number of crashes involving Tesla. So NHTSA took exception to Tesla's blog post from October 7th of 2018, in which Tesla claimed that the Model 3 had the lowest probability of injury of any vehicle tested by NHTSA. So NHTSA's guidelines ask car makers not to use terms like safest. Hmm. Uh, NHTSA is also asking the Federal Trade Commission to look into whether the blog post by Tesla was unfair or deceptive. Now, you got to remember that in 2013, NHTSA also took issue when Tesla... Uh, claimed that the Model S had achieved a safety score of 5.4 stars. NHTSA only gives up to five stars. And NHTSA doesn't want any manufacturer claiming anything more than just saying, like, we got this number of stars. So, oh my gosh, this is like, this is some terrible news, right? Because the, the NHTSA sent a cease and desist letter to Tesla. I mean, what is Tesla's recourse to this? Well, first of all, it's not that big a deal. I mean, a cease and desist letter just means stop what you're doing, please. You can respond to it. It's not mm -hmm. a legal document or anything. Okay. Um, and so their lawyer did respond to it. Um, Tesla's response to NHTSA is as follows. Dear Mr. Morrison, we are in receipt of your letter requesting that Tesla discontinue use of public statements that the Tesla Model 3 long range rear wheel drive achieved the lowest probability of injury of any vehicle tested in NHTSA's new car assessment program or NCAP. Respectfully, we disagree with the agency's position. Tesla's statement is neither untrue nor misleading. To the contrary, Tesla has provided consumers with fair and objective information to compare the relative safety of vehicles having five-star overall ratings. NHTSA's NCAP has succeeded in challenging manufacturers to develop safer vehicles, and now, with approximately 40% of vehicles receiving five-star overall ratings, it is more important than ever to help consumers differentiate. Tesla's blog statements are entirely based on actual test results and NHTSA's own calculations for determining relative risk of injury and probability of injury. Based on this published data, the Model 3 Long Range Real Wheel Drive has achieved a vehicle safety score of 0.38. That translates to an overall probability of injury of 5.7%. NHTSA has rated almost 1,000 vehicles since the current NCAP began with the 2011 model year. We have compared these results to every other public test report. No other vehicle has ever achieved an overall lower score. Wow. <laughs> yeah, now I had to dig through a lot of documents to find that response because uh, there's just a lot of just crummy emails back and forth. But that's basically Tesla's response to NHTSA. So, wow, there is a lot to talk about here. Yeah. So, first of all, there's this thing with the five-star crash safety ratings. I'm not paying attention to every single car that has a five-star crash report. Um, I don't have like a, a big thing on my wall that's keeping track of all this stuff. You're telling me that 40% of cars being sold have a five-star crash safety rating. Yeah. So, I mean, that's it's good. It would be bad if they all had one star. Right. But you'd think that if, you know, most of your class is, is doing pretty well, you might want to make the test a little harder. I mean, this is like if you were a teacher in a class and 40% of your students were getting A's, but some of the students were doing a lot better than the other kids that were getting A's and you didn't change anything, which is fine like in, ele in elementary school or just, you know, oh, we're just trying to meet up to the standard. But this, no, this is like a competitive well, thing. And we're talking about safety here. I mean, if you right. want to have the safest car, which you should, right. then it's not true that all five star cars are the same. Right. Some are better than others. It's, it's not just like, that it's not like they're perfect. Right? It's not like you can't get hurt if you get into one of these cars. That's not true. Tesla is being a tryhard here, it, you know, to use the school example, you know, they're trying all this extra effort putting into their school project or whatever right. to get ahead and to be better than everyone else. Yep. And basically all they're asking for from NHTSA is like, would you please just acknowledge, like, let us acknowledge the fact that our cars are the safest 
because they are, according to NHTSA's data. And that's the weirdest part about this. Yeah, so digging through this FOIA request, I found that NHTSA's only thing they could really hang their hat on is this statement here. Uh, NHTSA's big claim is that NHTSA's guidelines explain that comparing frontal crash ratings or overall vehicle scores of two or more vehicles with a weight differential of more than 250 pounds is inappropriate. So their claim is basically your car is way different than most other cars, so you shouldn't be comparing apples and oranges. So I mean, this would mean that if you were, you know, driving something really light, I don't know what the a really like light a Focus or yeah, something. Focus or you know, an even smaller car, like a like a golf or something, and then you got into an accident with a big truck. That like, oh well, there's no no knowing how, right. what the safety margin is there. But Tesla had a pretty good response. The Model 3 rear-wheel drive long range has an average curb weight of about 3,885 pounds. According to EPA, the average weight of a light-duty car or truck in 2016 was 4,035 pounds. So although we never intended to comment on weight, the weight of Model 3 is closely associated with and within 250 pounds of the average vehicle it may impact as well. In addition, According to IIHS in 2016, 41% of car occupant deaths, 56% of SUV occupant deaths, and 59% of pickup occupant deaths occurred in single vehicle crashes. Therefore, a majority of potentially serious crashes involving a Model 3 can be expected to involve no other vehicle or a similarly heavy or lighter car, truck, or SUV. I don't think NHTSA really has a leg to stand on here other than they just don't want car manufacturers to stand out in the crowd. I think that they set up these standards so that all car manufacturers could get to safe. Right. And then it's like, okay, don't, don't, nobody's uh, right. going to stand it's out. It's five stars. What, what, what more do you want? What right. more could you ask for? It's five stars. Hey, right. you want this car? It's five stars. You want that car? It's five it's, stars. It's such... You don't want that car over there. It only has four and a half stars. But this one has five stars, and so does this one. So what's it going to be? Right. And I mean, it's such an American way of doing things because, uh, you know, it's like this is safety. This is right. This is not like, I don't know. We're not talking about hot dogs or something. Right. This is safety. So having the most safe car in the world could be something you would want. Why Why not continue to differentiate the safer and safer and safer cars and you just only have one car that has five stars? This is the one car that has five stars. That one only has 4.92. Exactly. No, you're absolutely right. And that's one of the biggest complaints of NHTSA's system is that it's usually way far behind the times. Usually uh, it takes a few years for them to catch up to some whatever the newest safety features are. So in the meantime, there's no incentive for a manufacturer to even include that. Right. Thanks so much for watching this Now You Know clip. Head over to Now You Know channel for full episodes of Tesla Time News and in depth. And if you want to treat yourself and your family to something amazing, check this out. Jesse and I have been enjoying Masterclass, where we've been learning all sorts of fun topics from the masters themselves. Magic from Penn and Teller. Yes, that Penn and Teller. Filmmaking from Spike Lee. Yeah, that Spike Lee. TV writing from Shonda Rhimes. Acting from Helen Mirren. And so many more. Click the link down below to support our channel and experience what it's like to learn from the masters at Masterclass.